You do some politically conscious material. You do some mm -hmm. socially conscious yes. material. What inspires you to do jokes that, you know, might be a little controversial, but you deliver them so delic delicately <laughs> that you... What does that mean? Just, um, you know, when you're just annoyed of, at injustice and yeah. you just, you know, and just being influences like uh, George Carlin and Pryor and, you know, Paul Mooney... Stuff I, I I liked I loved comedians that always told the truth. Jo, Joan Rivers, Rickles. I liked people who shook up the system and just weren't weren't afraid to, to be edgy, but coming from a good place. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, I, you you come from a place of you know strictly comedy happiness. Yeah, and it's passion. It's just it's passion yeah, for passion. people. And like when I do race stuff, they go, "Man, how do you get away with it?" I go, it, it, "We're comedians. You're an artist. You're not." Now, if I was up there just going, you know. White people are very racist against black people. Good night. And you back then it up. With I should actual... just preach then. Yeah, and you're backing up with actual studies and experience. It's exactly. You're That's not why. Not speaking from a place of ignorance. No, you have to have you study like if I do stuff about uh, gay community, it's from research. It's from asking my friends from the gay community, like what is this? What is that? What's what's the proper thing to say? What's that? And I got actual knowledge. And then when you have actual knowledge, you that's where the com the comedy comes out of actual fucking research. That's why people think comedy is just you're up there guessing. You got to study shit, period, you, regardless of what it is. If I'm talking about cats, fucking study that shit so you know. Because there might be cat owners that are just super fucking sensitive. Well, that's not and true. Then, no, and then you go up and you do your thing about cats and they go, wow, you really know your shit. Yeah. I mean, it was funny as hell. But at first I was like getting, I was going to get mad. But damn, you really know your shit. That's what backs it up. Even if you're saying, fuck a cat, I'll throw it out the window. But then they go, but then you, you really know about cats. Yeah. So, you know, that's all. You know, that's. Why I, do I just, you think a lot of comedians don't have this kind of conscious style and go for cheap laughs? <sighs> Laziness? <laughs> it's, I, you know, it's. I, maybe you're not seeing it as a real art form. I think you need to watch people who did it better than you. You watch the greats. The, from, regardless of what you say, Cosby is one of the greatest storytellers ever. You yeah, how do you separate someone from their art when it turns out that they have such a dark background? How do you separate? Oh, it's you just, you know, you separate. Is there He's, any line? I mean, no. I'm, I'm, you don't think so? Well, Cosby, listen, we weren't what if there. Cosby cut somebody's head off? He's still a great comic. It's true. Because yeah. it's already recorded. Yeah. yeah despite whatever's <laughs> happened, that moment. Charles Manson was a pretty smart dude. He was just nuts, but he smart. He, he knew a lot of shit. Yeah. But... It is what it is, you know what I mean? But Cosby was still a great com comedian, you know what I mean? He has, we didn't know all this shit until he's already done his shit. I, R. Kelly's music is really good, but fuck, you know what I mean? There's you can't say his music isn't good. He's a fucking horrible person. I mean, if he did do all this shit, but his music is great. It's like you can separate, it's compartmentalization. It's, it's pretty easy. There seems to be a trend amongst entertainers, not just comedians, you know, musicians, athletes, where they do have troubled pasts, and they seem to use that a to make A lot of them do. Yeah, That's do where you, art comes from, though. Do, yeah, do you think you have to have a rocky past no, to be... No, okay. I don't have a rocky past. I don't... I am pretty. grew up pretty normal. Mother, father, Chicago, father, teach, mother's nurse. Uh, good sister's awesome, brother's cool. We're pretty normal, pretty normal. You know, the racism thing, yeah. That comes with the territory. Were you always doing... Sorry, white people, but <laughs> you, you seem to be pretty good at this shit. <laughs> We had a lot of practice. I tried to just be myself, but no, here comes segregation. <laughs> That's the old, was like old David Tell would say that. Oh, shit, here comes segregation. Were you always, Black man just struggling, struggling, struggling. Were you always focused on truth-heavy conscious material? Yes. Or was there a specific change? I was always focused on that. Because in, in, in college, uh, shout out University of Illinois, um, uh, Big Ten. I um in college I got really aware and just really learning about, you know, on my own African American history and really studying, not just letting the school, uh, you know, teach us because they won't they'll leave a lot of shit out. We would just study on our own, just reading a lot of books on my own. You started. That's where I really got motivated to, you know, you know, talk about real issues and shit like that. But doing it in a comedic form because let's say I'm talking I'm talking about race. You know, talking about white supremacy. You got white fans. So how are you going to do a white supremacy su supremacy joke and whites go, that was some funny shit. You know, you got to know how to balance that shit out because you have fans that are from every race that like you. So if you have a problem with that race, like if I have a bunch of Chinese people coming, how am I going to do my Chinese people ain't shit joke? How am I going to be like, Chinese people are rude as fuck. Now, how am I going to do it? You got to have a way to, it's a way you serve it. 
you're like a chef. I, like, I hate eggplant, right? I cannot stand that shit. But I, I remember I've been to some restaurants where chef, they have like high end chefs, which would take the eggplant and make it like a dip. And I go, this is fucking amazing. And they'll say, that's eggplant. I go, this is eggplant? It's the same way with a joke. How are you serving it to these people? Uh, you, you, you need to be, if, especially if a joke is so fucking hard, so difficult, you, you, you need to work hard at serving it the right way. You need to research it and really do it the right way. And you are an equal opportunity comedian where we're, you're not just focused on Asian. Yeah, so oh, you're messing with everybody. Yeah, so there's no I, way I that everybody. you could say. So is, do you think, uh, you know, you think it's harder to break into the industry with your kind of material? Is it hard to get on TV saying that kind of stuff? Um, I think so. I think that if you look at the pattern of the comedians that do make, I mean, Times are so different now. Everybody's afraid of everything now, so they're, it seems like they're rewarding people who don't say anything. Yeah. Have nothing to say. We want obedient workers. Yeah, and, and it's bad because comedy doesn't work that way. Comedy is a kind of art form. If you don't do it right, it's going to show, and people are going to be like, what the fuck am I watching? It's going gonna, it's gonna, to... And, and just because you're honest doesn't mean you're dirty, doesn't mean you're edgy. Just be true to... If you're a clean comic and that's your truth, Cool. Like a guy like Sinbad is clean, but he'll destroy a whole room. He's clean, but he's funny. Brian Regan, one of my favorites, clean but funny as hell. If that's your truth, cool. But th there's a lot of people that are, I think, are faking like they're comedians because comedy is open to everybody now. Now, different countries are doing stand up. Yeah, back in back in I Am Comic, you claimed if you're not doing stand up in, in New, New York, York yes, you're not right. shit. Is that still true? Uh, yeah. So even with the internet and all these YouTube kids yeah. or whatever? They come to New York and get tore up. You know what I mean? I just believe New York because I went to New York. I'm from Chicago, which was a great comedy town. I go to New York and I, and I went to all other cities and I said, oh, wow, these guys do comedy five shows in a night? What? Yeah, we do like, we go up about four or five times a night. I said, well, hmm. So I said, I'll move to New York. Move to New York. I was doing 40 shows a week. Come on, man. It's the best way to become a better show, comic. 40 times on stage. Do you have to just listen, hit the listen, stage? Is that the only way? Okay. 40 <laughs> times on stage, what the fuck you think I'm going to be like? 40 times on stage compared to someone over here or, or on some other scene who went up five times in the week, and I right. went up 40. I'm going to be way better than you. I'm going to be supremely better than you. It's like, you know, it's like I'm going to be, I'm Michael Jordan, period. So there's no Probably. replacement for experience. So. No, it, stage time is period. That's, you win. If you go to the batting cage and you hit, you be, you, that's how you become a good hitter. You got to hit the ball a lot of times. And with stand-up in, in, in New York, the way, we tr the way we are trained, it's just, I'm talking about specifically for stand-up. I'm not talking about TV shows. I'm talking about, uh-oh. Oh, come on. Oh, We're doing an interview here. No, no. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm not talking. Get the fuck's wrong with you, dude? <laughs> fuck that. No, keep this in this. Don't fucking cut it. <laughs> like this. Um, it, and the thing is, it's, it's um, fuck was I going to say? Shit. You ruined it. Yeah, no, no. Um, uh, it, there's no, it's like, there's no magic. When people say, what's the, what's the, there's no trick. You got to fucking, and, and this is to me, you know, it, doing 40 shows a week, and that's the, that's the fastest way to become good. And that still takes a long time. Let alone someone's doing it three, four times a week, and they say, oh, I've been doing comedy 10 years. My 10 years is way different than your 10 years. You know what I mean? That's like you have a, 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 a bachelor's degree at, you know, University of fucking Delaware, and I have a bachelor's at Harvard. Right. It's, it's like, different. It's very different. We're trained differently. That's all I'm saying. I just say New York is the place because I've proven it, and it's I it shows in my shit yep. that I'm like, I go on stage a lot. I, you know, New York's, we go on stage one, two in the morning. It's me, Dave Attell, um, Big J Okerson. Uh, it's it's Chappelle. Well, you know Chappelle will come if he's in town. He's on stage till two, three in the morning. I mean, you you got it. that's how you get good. It's it's an exact science. You got to do it a lot. So tonight on stage, you made a claim that all the presidential elections are rigged oh, already. So I you, think all that shit. Of course, I because agree a lot of as well. Presidents, you got to be related to each other too. Like you have to be in the same bloodline. 
But so when like, you say, I, that's what I, you know. okay, yeah, I've heard yeah, the Kennedys, the Clintons, I've all heard these shit. things. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when you make a claim like that, that, uh, you know, the normal person might not be used to hearing, uh -huh. what's your goal when you say something like this to a crowd of people? Do you just want them to leave more conscious of the I world? I just want them to be a little more conscious. Just to, I, I just want to let them know the ridiculousness of all this shit. Like, dude, this shit's rigged. But I'll do my due diligence and go for, eh. But I'm, I'm going to stop. Fuck this. It's stupid. Yeah, I mean, there's that conspiracy, you know, the rich control everything, that's fair, and people think once we have automation, there's going to be no use for poor people, but yeah, I no, think... No, no, poor people are staying. Yeah, we because need poor. we need the poor to, you know, support the bullshit economy. Well, you need Without the, poor you, people, nobody's eating Big Macs and bubblegum. Well, you need poor for the army. That's true. Well, for your that no, can be for, automated. From your, we can no, have robots, you don't think so? For your armed forces, you need poor people, because poor people will join the army when they don't have shit to do. And a lot of times when I would do like USO shit and do like a lot of servicemen comedy shows, I'd ask a lot of those kids, yeah, why did you do it? I have shit to do, I had no money. They said they would get me a college, this, 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 that. Poor people is, it's a set thing. You have to have poor people. That poor people are there for a reason. We have precise drones though. You don't think a, a military could work with robots? Not just yet, but Not yet. poor people are, are useful. Like you need, Who's gonna? Who's gonna? How's Service Walmart? How's Walmart gonna function? Exactly. Right now, we how's need the it. McDonald's gonna function? How you need? But, them. Well, that's what we said. We already have. How's the police gonna work? How are the police gonna work? They there's, need to work. There's police robots already, but <laughs> no, it's not as. I they can't be real. racist. I guess. Uh, uh, do you need police? You need poor people. Police have to work. Um, you need a lot. Poor people are like. It's almost like, not saying that we're all poor people are suckers, but you need people to buy your product. Yeah. Yeah, I've always seen it as a hierarchy of needs. You know, when yeah, you course. have nothing, you're more willing to compromise. Because you can, you can literally get rid of poverty. You can get rid of that shit. Yeah, there's enough for everybody, but you know, yeah, it's not going to serve the purpose, the agenda. You know what I mean? Yeah, everybody has these crazy conspiracy theories. It seems like the only thing that reigns true is that the rich want to get richer at any cost. I think if you're rich, that's just a normal thing. I mean, if you not want, worry about you want to get richer, I think that's just normal to get more money. Hey, I want to get more shit. Yeah. Yeah, everybody it's, wants to grow. Yeah, That's the meaning of life, just, right? It's growth. Yeah, like, oh, I have 100 million. Oh, let me see if that's I can get 300 million. Yeah, Google doesn't go, we did 5 billion. And this that's year. it. Let's cap they it. say, let's keep going. Yes, no yeah. matter what, at that's any cost. It. Yeah, I guess, yeah, because in business, you know, you, there's no emotion. Right. You can't right. worry about you, all. The, the only thing that matters is the bottom line. Is it? Well, that was pretty heavy. So, <laughs> going into 2020, yeah. what was your best moment of the decade? Damn. Of the decade, sheesh. Ten years. Oh, We're going goodness. forward. Yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? 20, 20. I know, 20. My best? I don't even... Uh, Can you pinpoint shit, one, or has yeah. it all been pretty great? No health problems, man. That's good. Shit, health, man. Because I've had some friends pass away not too long ago. Comics, you know, that young. So, yeah, just being healthy, shit. You know, not getting shot. <laughs> Fuck. What's been... <laughs> Nowadays, not getting shot. <laughs> What's been the worst moment of the decade? For me? Yeah. Worst moment? Um, I think losing my dad. That was a pretty fucked up. Yeah. Losing my father was terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was terrible. But uh other than that, you know, everything's pretty smooth. I mean, other than like normal complaints like, oh, I wanna get on a TV show, I wanna get on the normal shit. Other than that, working consistently, you know embracing social media that's one of my highlights it's just embracing social media about three years ago do you think and it's comics working. have no choice wait but hold to... up i'm not done okay. Okay. i'm not done <laughs> expand on no the no question. i know i know you when you interview uh -huh. you gotta like let me let me just talk well, and you, then you go you have a lot of time. I like, no i get it you have a lot in your head ready okay i said embracing social media was very important for me that was like a big thing because i was so resistant against it you know and, you know, being egotistical, old school shit. But then when I got on it, I embraced it and I fucking love it. And I'm glad I did because it changed my demographic. It changed I mean, my live shows and it's really working. Just doing podcasting and all this other shit. So I'm, that was a big Do you highlight. think comedians have no choice but to embrace it? Or can you still be a superstar without dealing with social media? You can be a superstar. You can still, if you get lucky, maybe you, you audition and get a movie. Someone sees you. The, the old school way still works. But I just think that the day-to-day -day, um, social media is, is a smart thing to do because it's day-to-day. -day. While you're, let's say you're auditioning for something and you're like waiting for the results and they say, well, they're going to call you next week. You can be building your brand every single day. Every single, there's billions of people on their phones. 
you could throw out a, a video and that shit can go viral. I'm just saying, the possibility of going viral is there. What if you go viral and now you're huge because of that? So it just would behoove you. I told it behoove you to you have to get on that because now comedy clubs want to know what your your social media is. Numbers. Your numbers. And there some people are coming into comedy clubs don't have any comedy s skills or and they're filling up places cuz they got millions of followers. Do you think I, I, I don't blame comedy clubs for having them cuz it's money. Do you think these, you know, these new YouTube stars who try comedy because they have millions of followers and then they burn their whole audience, do you think that's bad for stand-up comedy? Do you think that sets a bad precedent for us? I think it does, but it's going to the pendulum will swing back where they use real comedians. Yes. The, the it's it's like we finally put the cart before the horse. Because in stand-up, you have to do this shit for a long time. It takes a long time to get right. It takes a long time. Just to be an opener, just to be a middle act, just to be... It takes a long time. So they are doing it the reverse. People are coming to see them because they haven't seen their stand-up. Yeah. They're watching videos. And they don't even understand this realm is a whole nother ball game. It's like, it's like pretend boxing at home and then you go into a real boxing ring and you just go, oh shit, I was wrong. And you're getting your ass beat. That's what's gonna be happening to them. They're gonna fall off because stand up, their popularity is not is, is gonna fade. It, they're not gonna be able to catch up with stand up because stand up takes years. Their popularity has happened like this. So, and the, and the fact is comedy clubs, when you, know, when you come back to a comedy club, you know how fast you're like, well, I'm back. By the time they come back, their acts are not gonna be complete. And the same people that came and saw them, they're gonna be like, oh, this bullshit. So they're gonna start to fade and and not, because they can't rush stand up. It's yeah. impossible. I rush it by doing it 40, I did, that's how I rushed it by doing it 40 times a week. That's how I rushed it. By doing it a lot. 20 years. I said, I rushed it by doing it 40 times a week. So that's, that's how hard stand up is, that's how difficult it is. Seinfeld told I've gotten advice from Cosby. I've been fortunate. Seinfeld, Seinfeld said the same shit. You know, if you're a nine-year-old, you're a nine-year-old. If you're nine years in comedy, you're a nine-year-old in comedy. If you're 10 years, you're a 10-year-old in comedy. That was the greatest advice he ever gave me. It's just, and he still does stand-up. He's a billionaire, but he stand-up is that difficult where you have to be on it all the time. You've got to keep sharpening that shit. You know? So what do you think the future holds for stand-up comedy? Is there going to be another trend like YouTube guys? Do you have any idea mm -hmm. what the future holds? I'm hoping that the future holds that, like, we're all going to be around still. The thing about com comedians is they stay through the decades, through era. A lot of people fall off. And Look at Chris Rock, still relevant. Look at, you know, Jim Gaffigan, still relevant. Look at all these guys. They're all, we're all relevant because you grow as a comic. It, it's like wine. You get better as you age. Comedy is not, you're not great at 20. You're out of your fucking mind. It's impossible. A lot of times these magazines, they'll say, ooh, comedians to watch. They say, you mean the veterans? That's who you need to be watching. Because they'll say comedians to watch. Just because you got a TV show doesn't mean you're a good comic. It's two different things, you know? But once they travel, when they come to the Tampa Bays and see and get punched in the face and go, fuck, I'm not as good as I thought I was. <laughs> when you come to the Floridas and the Texas and the different places where they go, we paid all this money for this shit? And I'm not telling, I'm not putting down anybody. I... I, th I respect like a guy like there's King Batch. There's guys like certain guys that are really actually trying to do stand up and actually respecting the art form. You know what I mean? By doing it gradually. But the reality is, is that th they're going to see some days where it's not going down because you're not really putting the work in. And it takes a lot of work, man. It, you know. Is there a stand-up comic who you love, who you don't think has gotten the attention they deserve, and do you think there's a reason why they haven't blown up? Oh, shit. Who, who's, who's amazing? Oh, I got a guy by the name... There was, there's a girl, a girl by the name of Marina Franklin. She's fantastic. Uh, Greer Barnes. Shit. Yeah. He's fantastic. Um, there's Kurt Metzger. I love Kurt Metzger. There's... Um, you know, Big J, Big J Ogerson, like a lot, yeah, a lot, there's a lot of great, Sam Morrill, there's um, a lot of guys that are, but you know what's great is that we're using the social media to blow up. We're like, fuck this, we're not gonna, we're not, you know, we all wanna do, we would love to do Netflix and HBO and all that, but if, if they're not like knocking at your door, you gotta fucking kick the door down and do your own shit, make your own numbers, create your own self. It's gorilla, it's Wild West out here. It really is the Wild West. It's digital Wild West. Fuck it, everybody's getting it. So if you already have the comedic skill, now you just got to get, be diligent 
and get on this social media and you gotta get get out of your own way. Ego has to go. The ego has to go, man. Cause this shit ain't waiting on anybody. You're gonna get left out. You know? So For sure. Yeah. Well, that's great stuff. So last question then. 2020, new decade. Mm. What do you want specifically? Mm. What does the future hold for Godfrey? I want, I love film. I want to still do film. Um, I want to still do, I want to do specials, stand-up specials. You know, I want to do that because that's what I do. I want people to see it. And I want to be able to still really use social media the way I've been doing it. No, there's nothing that's changed. 2020, I say it's like perfect vision, 2020. So I want I'm, more research on things, just really educating myself on different things to really be skillful in different things. You know what I mean? Yeah, do you think and, 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 and ask more questions with people in, diff, in the younger era. I like hanging around that and asking more questions and being more inquisitive, even more inquisitive, and really studying my art form. Do you think symbolism is that powerful where something just is like 2020 – invokes clear vision whereas yeah. 2019 sounds complicated yeah, and weird it's like 2020 is just a thing to just to motivate you for the year so you don't slack off you know i've never had a problem with working out i've always been diligent about that so i don't have a resolution as far as my work ethic as far as stand up got that down health wise got that down um you know i think do you uh, have any vices oh i got some i have some uh, May not want to toss it. No, no, no. I don't really have any. I'm not a drug person. Yeah. Smoke some cigars here and there. I'm pretty. My thing is, it, it's the mental thing because I study a lot of uh, uh, philosophers like Neville Goddard, Napoleon Hill, Ernest Holmes. Um, I study. Um, um, it's like all the the, the thinkers of, of Doctor of Reverend Ike, all the thinkers that you know the spiritualists like Esther Hicks, you know Hay House, Esther Hicks, Law of Attraction people, all these great thinkers from the past. I'm trying to. I studied it for a long time, but this time I'm trying to really apply it. All this stuff is a mental game. No matter who the fuck is 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 the gatekeeper, if you mentally mentally really really believe in that you're gonna achieve shit. Shit will work out for you, no matter who the fuck is 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 here or there. But you have to make sure you're not focused on other what other people are doing, not getting mad at other people's shit. Fuck, why do they have that? That's one of the things I'm focusing on is not worrying about their this person. Yeah, shit. worry about Just worry yourself. about my shit. Yeah, attract the people that are on the same page as me and have the right team to fucking get to the goal line. What do you believe is your strongest aspect of performing? What do you like the most about your act? Um. The honesty and voice change. Yeah, you do a lot of different accents so quickly yeah, and in and that's, out. Yeah, yeah that's just natural. Yeah, the voice change is great because it, it's it, it, what's great is like when you Sorry, the when manager you is calling us right now. Hello. A terrible interviewer. That's the manager. Yeah, I'm ready to start. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you said your manager. No, this manager. the like improv manager's, manager's gone. You're a shitty interviewer. What's that? This is garbage. How do? You? Okay, yeah, I'm ready. You're a terrible. I was good. You so how does it feel to be a shitty interview? Same as every day, man. Okay. <laughs> you stink. Godfrey. Okay. What is that name? Godfrey means the uh, gift. God's gift of peace is the real name. It's the British version. The, the German version is Gottfried, which is God's gift of peace. In in Dutch, it's Godfrey because G is H in Dutch. And in French, it's Godfrey. Like the famous king, uh, the French uh, Godfrey du Bouillon, or the Godfrey du Montmartre, which is a famous French movie. So Godfrey means God's gifts of peace, which my dad was Godfrey Senior. So wonderful. You ready yes. to do a show? I'm ready. What goes through your head right before you go on stage? Nothing. Nothing. Perfect. Yeah, I just go. When is this dude getting off? Oh, no, just kidding. Not me tonight. You're, I, the host. Just, you're the host, dude. No, I just my guy. nothing. I just nothing. I just go. Yeah. Ah, I wonder what I'm going to do today. And it's just like it's just you're just ready. It's clear just like mind. because of all that. Yeah, it's clear mind. And it's, this is what the fuck I do. Beautiful. It's like natural. Yeah, you're happy. natural too. So you know what? Are you, oh, thank you. Are you happy? I'm very, very happy. I'm yeah. happy, but I'm not satisfied with certain things right. I want. You know well, what I mean? If you're satisfied, you're not working hard enough. There it is, right? Work harder, everybody. No satisfaction. Godfrey. I can't Thank get so no. Wah, wah, wah. The Rolling Stones. Fat. Of course, my favorite rock group. Do one more setting it up like, hey, it's New Year's Eve. We're here with Godfrey at the Tampa Improv. Yeah, go ahead. What's up, everybody? It's New Year's Eve. We're in the green room of the Tampa Improv with Godfrey. What's up? 2019, 2020. Let's get it. Whoa. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. Right, and, uh, Whoa. Whoa. Rick Ross. Yeah, Whoa. Whoa. Why are you I'm just going to call boy. you guys naturally now. 
Oh, well, I guess we're done now. Yeah, yeah, well, I can find it. Maybe I don't know. What's up? Hey, Re. Hey, well, awesome stuff, guys. Play boy. Coca leaf plants. Yeah, we're trying to talk deep. So yeah, I love I, I love the conscious talking. shit. No, yeah, I want to because I because I'm actually curious. I go, what do you want out of you telling people that the election's rigged? You know, what are you? Because I mean, you're. Yeah, it's just it's just just to, just you know this is all a joke, man. It's like it's like really you guys. John yeah, because he's still Baker buying into this. Like two weeks ago, John he got Baker, Baker acted, acted after we filmed. I, not right. me. I, I he got Baker acted. After we filmed something together. Yeah, let's go outside. I want to see if they're starting the show. I got to get down there. Okay, is everything okay? Everybody good? Yeah, okay, it's good. I was making sure they didn't start yet. But yeah, I love you, man. Are they all seated or something now? Yeah, but I mean, they're not, they didn't dim the lights yet, so it doesn't okay. matter. Yeah. So John rocks out some internet videos. Have you seen any Tampa News Force? Yeah. What is Tampa News Force, that's the thing I make. Tampa News, Tampa News Force. Force? Oh. Yeah, Tampa News Force. What can I do to be better? What can you do to be yes. better? Rip me up on camera. No, everybody's different. I can't yeah. tell you how well, to be fair. better. I just do what I try to do to be better, you know? I mean, I look up how can I be better. Google it. Google, how do I be better? Google, how do you? How do I be better? Uh, Google. Yeah, I mean, it depends thing. on what you want. It well, depends on what yeah, your Yeah, because comedy is so subjective. I couldn't do your so. act. We couldn't no. do each other. Some people you know. do. <laughs> Some yeah. people will do your act. <laughs> and it's scary if they do it better than you. You're like, well, yeah, Robert Williams scary. was one of those guys. I heard, yeah. He would he buy took material. a lot of shit. But he, he was good at it. Wouldn't he pay for it after people would confront him? they yeah. go, you took my shit. And you go, here's some money. Yeah, and they'd be like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, just... Every, it's subjective. Like I said, everybody's goals are different, man. You know. Where do you think this passion for the truth came from for you? Because you, you, you have this passion. Do you know where, why it started? Just from just observing and the world. And college was a big it was a catalyst for that. College, just reading about shit and really studying. She's like, what the fuck? And just being angry at shit and going, where can I go to do this and express it? Can't work in an office and do that. You'll be shut down can't uh because i have my degree in psychology so i said i was thinking about psychiatry and i'm like yeah that wouldn't be any good telling other people shit i want to be able to say shit to people and i'm funny i think i'm pretty funny so comedy is where i'm gonna go so the college was the catalyst for that is there a specific injustice in the world that you believe is the worst yeah hating the hate, hatred of black people okay period Period. Do you think that has some self-interest involved? Yeah, it's the fucking worst. No, it's right. the fucking worst. I, it's just my thing. is like the worst because, like, like my buddy has. He's like, if whenever you see like people say, "I hate these fucking Asians," "I hate Spanish people," "I hate," I go, "Boy, wait till I leave the room." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just it, because my thing that makes me upset is that. And, you know, I'll brag about it. You know me. I'll do it. I say black people, we've given everybody everything. Like, we are, like, the top dogs in everything. I love your culture. We're, we're the culture creators. We do everything. And we're, we were first on the planet. Like, why are we getting shit on? Like, what? Like we need to start shitting on, like, some Indian people. Smack them around a little bit. Are we ever smack, them, smack the ones that aren't really doing much around. Everybody listens to our music. You listening to Indian music? Nobody's listening to that shit. Why don't we? Are we ever going to be equal? I don't know about the that. World? No. Listen, let me tell you something. If it wasn't racism, there would be some other kind of hierarchy. Because yeah, all, all kind of other animals do it. Bees have it. Rats have it. Physical they all, strength. Yeah, they, intelligence. All, everybody has... It's a lot of categories. Every, everybody has hierarchy. There you go again. Fuck! Fucking A. Son of a bitch! Ringtone now. It's going so well! making noises. God damn it. I love that he's fucking up. And they don't see him. <laughs> yeah. They don't even know what he's wearing right yeah, now, yeah, which is yeah, hilarious. There you him. go. Look get at that, that fucker. Our tourist from the LLB. Uh, <laughs> is that a cannon? What is that? Nike, Nike going to Jurassic Park is that a now. Cannon? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. That's all. That bugs me. You know, and it's you know, and I like I said, even if it weren't racism, it'd be something else. It would be like, oh, we hate the four toed motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, got four toes, bitch. Yeah. Get out of my. Different. It would be. It's natural to to battle and and to compete it's a natural thing and race was it was like it was a conceptual thing it was it was brought in around the 1500s the race thing like black what that was european shit to, to to battle it was like we're gonna label motherfuckers so we can battle them it's all it's all about economics and domination shit like that i get it you know what i mean i get it so but that's that's pretty much it you know but it's 
it's it's kind it's weird because comedy needs that. It needs it to be around. If the world gets perfect, then comedy There's stinks. There's gonna be nothing to talk about. Yeah, I just know. I just, just the shooting. Stop that. You can hate, but just stop shooting, motherfuckers. That's all. That's fair. That's that's, that's the only part. You can hate. That's cool, but just stop shooting. Twenty twenty. Stop shooting each other. Twenty twenty. Clear vision. How that's about the have, theme. How about clear vision? Just really see who you're shooting. No collateral. <laughs> if you want to kill somebody, make sure you. <laughs> Jesus. Because yeah. I tell cops, stop shooting black dudes. You what do stop. they say? I say because you're fucking up your football fantasy choices. Oh, that's a true. funny joke. That is shut funny. Up. It's funny. Shut up. I'm playing, you know, the sensitive. What are you fucking shut up? I'm playing the sensitive that's interviewer. It's got a. It is a good one. Football choices are wrong with going away. Yeah, fantasy football is a pretty cool thing. Imagine, we, imagine if all white dudes were left and you're all white sports. No, white guys aren't even gonna watch that shit. Yeah, it's pretty cool to objectify Ultimate people. Ultimate frisbee is the last bastion. For oh players. no. That's it. Yeah, I guess. Why are we good at frisbee? <laughs> this motion, we're really you guys good at are a fucking amazing a swift frisbee. Talk. You're fucking amazing. That's the only thing you actually give away. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> well, I love you, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, you're awesome. Great shit. Good to see. Nice, good hair. Yeah, thank you. I feel like I feel like I'm, it's after after a rock solo. <laughs> no. You need a British accent with that hair. <laughs> it's like, so Godfrey, up, you know, it's fucking oh, beautiful. I love your comedy. It's just, you're pushing the edge. I'm, I don't know where you get it from, but it's really from my art, and I love it. And it's, What's your favorite accent? Uh, uh, you know what? British is fun. British is fun. British is fun. Um, my African accent, my father, when I do him, is fucking Ooh. great. Oh, geez, what the f- do you said Uno? Oh, no. Oh, I thought you said oh, Uno. Oh, no. That, you just your Miss Caribbean. You're just guessing. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It might be ending. Oh, no. What's up, bro? Uh, yeah, how you bro. doing, bruv? Hey, yeah, bruv. Yeah, right, quick. <laughs> you're just, you're like, yeah, you mix them all together. Hopefully one day. Come here, rock, right, quick. Oh, Come here, oh no. Right, quick. I know. I go, quick. Or, 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 or my eyes. eyes. You're fucking right, you bastard. Fucking Who right, cares, you fucking cunt, you? Right. You're a fucking cunt, and you know it. What's the best lingo you've ever heard from any culture? What's the funniest thing? Uh, oh, Jamaican, Jamaican is fucking Blood, fantastic. Clad, bomba clad, man, a ras clad. You understand me say, but bomba ras clad. That's funny. I mean, but the 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 worst is the Scottish. I don't even know what the fuck they're saying. Okay. It's different. I don't know. They're like, yeah, you fucking right the fucking dead or then what? I said, you fucking right the dead or fucking ever. What? And the Irish guys have no. Oh, all he said was, "You're going downstairs yeah. to get your thing." I'm like, Hur. like, yeah, their shit is really hard we to like figure out. Lingo. It makes us feel special. It's a, but the fact that it's English, know. like, I just said, "Hey, hello." He's like, "Oh, hello, you in?" What? Huh? I said, "Hello, you fucking in?" I remember one time the Scottish dude was telling me a joke. I didn't understand anything. He's telling me he's like, "Oh, that's it for ya." I was like, "Okay, I think I caught joke." And he's like. And he's talking. I'm, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. And at the and his punchline was like, it, it's like 40 million. At the end, he goes, 40 million sperm. Don't you get it? And I said, what the fuck is a sperm? He goes, sperm. Sperm. Dude, he was like this, sperm. Hey, fucking sperm. It's from your dick, yo, sperm. Sperm? Fuck, that's... And it's this is English. I say yeah. sperm. He goes, so, you fucking spare them. For the million, spare them. Spare them. What's your fa- What's your favorite word? My favorite word is um ass- assassin. Oh, that's a good word. Assassin, assassin is my favorite. Twice. Assassin means because assassin the word comes from hassassin, which is the origin of that word comes from back in the day to Muslims in the 11th century, mm-hmm. before they would um. It means hashish smoker, and before they would kill somebody, they would smoke the hashish to get in a state of mind to murder, to, to, to smoke you motherfuckers. You could be like a school teacher. Yeah. You, could be, you could run your own university and be the... I call it Godfrey University? God, you. Yeah. God, yeah. Maybe I should start that and get some matriculation going or something. I don't know. All right, we love you so much, That's Godfrey. Like Newton microphone. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Come fly with me. Hey. <laughs> Peace. We're best friends but in real life. Be the lady tonight. Never get out of my sight. Hell no, I was black. No snow.
Thanks, man. Absolutely wonderful. Nice thing, Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that was awesome, That's gonna be amazing. That was really good. No, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll cut the you know the most sensational moments. I don't know, fucking. It's way too late. Ten fifteen. It should be going on now. Because we gotta go before the eleven twelve, right? Yeah, you. I'm. I'm assuming you're gonna be up there to be like, hey guys. I gotta like stop. Yeah, you gotta be like, guess what, everybody? It's midnight. It's a different year now. We have to be good people again.